One of the things that I always wanted with the Police Academy pictures, because I'm a great lover of, of stunts in movies, of natural stunts, I figured if we're going to make an institutional comedy, a, a Police Academy a comedy, it'll have to be funny, but it'll often also have to have action in it, real action. And the action has to be, the stunts have to be not vicious at all, but they have to be funny. And you have to come up with stunt people that have wonderful body attitudes and being able to either double our principles beautifully, and we, we have some very gifted comedians out there. And, and, and stunt people, stunt people are the best in the world. We also had Wink Roberts on this thing, and he was great. Another one of the really memorable scenes was uh, 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 G.W. Bailey, uh, he's racing on a motorcycle that he's commandeered. I was on in the back of a truck on a on a on a motorcycle with the guys what they call the poor man process. They had a two by four on the wheels, shaking like that, and so I was going like that in the back of this truck, and it was speeding, so it looked like I was driving. And of course, it was the great stunt man, um, Dar Robinson, who we later lost. I mean, he was a legend. You know, he was a high fall specialist. He had done. That's incredible, the parachute jump, the descender jump off the CNN Tower, which was the world's largest freestanding structure. I think it's over 1,800 feet, and he was absolutely fearless. He ran that motorcycle up to really fast, and then we had a car pull in front of him, and he struck it. I was the car that pulled out in front of him, and on the very first take, we had all these boxes behind the car that he was supposed to land into. The idea was he had to come over the motorcycle without catching his legs on the handlebars. And then he would, he was just, he went flying for, I don't know, it looked like 10 yards to me, 30 feet. People to this day ask me, well, how, how did you actually do that? As if I, they swear to remember that my head was stuck in a horse's ass. And I, I said, well, believe it or not, I, you know, we did it. I had to spend a lot of time with a horse and get to know him before he'd let me. Uh, but of course, I never got close to the horse. <laughs> but the most famous scene is when George is at the podium and uh, Steve Gutenberg is hiding under the podium with a prostitute. The podium scene. Oh. Well, the podium. Can you podium. have a funnier scene than the that? The podium. Um, it was my debut in porno. <laughs> <laughs> and um, brilliant. I, I hope I'm not remembered solely for that scene. Although it did make people laugh. It made me laugh as well. Sure did. You know. Now this is a guy who's. Uh, you know, he does Chekhov, and uh, he studied opera in Italy and everything. And he said, I just wonder, you know, it seems to me we're skirting a fine line here between funny and vulgar. And uh, I, I said, well, I have a feeling it's both funny and vulgar. <laughs> but somehow I got around to it and the way of doing it, which was to be still. Be still, but express facially what might have been my reaction to what was going on. And that seemed to be the right procedure. It worked. When we tested it, just had the audience on the floor. I mean, they couldn't, it took them a while to recover from that scene. Alan Ladd uh, Jr., who was running the studio, running the Alan Ladd Company, who actually was the company that I made this picture for, and Warner Brothers. Yeah. It was Laddie who, who came up with that. It was just terrific. And Laddie said, I'll tell you what, we've got one really great joke in this picture, one great joke that always plays well, and that's the podium joke and the, and the, with, with George Gaines. Why don't we reverse that at the end and shoot a little scene in which the joke is in effect re reversed and Mahoney is the one that is being embarrassed. But of course, overall, I mean, it's a classic, it's a classic in films, a classic in literature. You get a group of, group of seemingly uh, losers together and they turn out to be the heroes and the champions. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful uh, story. That they all had something different about them, all had uh, something flawed about their character, and 
in the end, you see that those flaws actually are their strengths. And when you ask how a person would respond under pressure, I believe the answer is each according to their gifts. The sound guy was like, whoa, because he had been taping me on, on the other voice. The hex voice, that one, you know. And um, they were wondering, where did that, what, was something wrong with the equipment? you notice that it became a family, even though everyone was dysfunctional. A dysfunctional family, but nonetheless, but still a family. And you notice how everyone seemed to come together at the same time, but the timing of the film was wonderful. But you notice how, even in life, you know, when, when the underdogs band together, they're actually better than the regulars. Now I'm back in the academy, you know, and we got an award and a promotion, Steve and I. And, uh, and that, was, that was really great. When I started, uh, police Academy, I sensed it could, as an institutional comedy, it might have a shot, but I never thought it would do what it did. Never, never, never. And on opening night, uh, I got calls from a lot of the actors. Uh, they, had gone, uh, they had gone down to the Grauman Chinese Theater and all that to see if anybody was going to show up. And I remember I watched it from the projection booth because I was so nervous. And the film ran. Everybody laughed, and I walked out, and my manager grabbed me, and he pulled me aside, and he said, I'm putting you into a TV series immediately. This is going to be the biggest bomb Hollywood has ever seen. The remarkable thing about it is that the comedy translates into every single language. It's very visual comedy. It's, it's kind of slapsticky, and people always respond to slapstick, it seems. It's just that they were internationally such a success, and we've made so many friends all over the world. We were in Madrid, and there was this really long, long, long line, about a block and a half long, of people waiting to go into a movie. And I thought, well, I guess Spielberg's got, you know, something in town. And damn if it wasn't, I think, Loco de Police Academy. <laughs> oh, Police Academy. Fantastic. I love this Police Academy. Beautiful film. The best thing about the Police Academy movies are the fans. I got stopped in the street or somewhere. On the train coming here today, there were people saying hello and thanking me and all that. I'm almost 60 years old. <laughs> I'm just standing out in the middle of a restaurant going, Proctor! And they all scream, and you know, like I'm a rock star. I'm an old police academy rock star, screaming Proctor to the crowd. Walked in the stadium and they said, High Tower, 80,000 people. High tower. I said, boy, my whole football career has gone down the drain because of a movie. It, it's, it's, that's how powerful that movie was. I could be notorious, you know, I mean, it, it could be worse. I could be, you know, famous for things that are fairly ugly. But uh, uh, if, this, if this is what life has handed me, I'll take it. It's great. <laughs>